Welcome back. In this video we'll continue our Pro Series build using the plug and play electronics and spindle packages to get the Pro 4848 that we built in the mechanical assembly video, Moving and Cutting. Before we do that, let's take a closer look at some of the key features of these products. Starting with the NEMA 34 plug and play system. As you can see, our industrial enclosures come with the heavy-duty features and robust connections you'd expect from production-grade equipment. A NEMA-compliant enclosure keeps things protected and cool for your electronics. The high-visibility power switch is easy to find and simple to use. This plug-and-play controller is world power ready and can be ordered or configured after the fact for your local wall power, including 110 and 220 volts. Moving around to the primary panel, there are a number of ports to be aware of. Starting with the Ethernet port. This is where the CNC control computer is connected and feeds this industrial controller a steady stream of spindle RPM commands, relay activation, and of course movement data, which this controller will use to generate high current stepper motor signals and communicate back inputs such as the homing limit switches and the emergency stop. The sturdy construction continues inside where you'll find a well-organized component layout with extensive use of circuit boards to ensure reliable operation in the most demanding environments. Key components include the high current 48 volt power supplies, the advanced all digital drivers that allow your motors to run cooler, quieter, and more efficiently, and the Ethernet motion controller which allows most Windows based PCs to drive and control the CNC machine. Alright, let's talk about the business end of these Pro Series machines. The 2.2 kilowatt plug and play spindle. Removing the dust collection shoe, we can get a better look at this industrial cutting tool. By the way, you can check out our tutorial on how to make this dust collection shoe with the link here or in the description. This 2.2 kilowatt spindle produces consistent rated power throughout its entire RPM range, unlike most routers which produce most of their power only at their highest RPM setting. This air-cooled spindle is significantly quieter than many routers, and unlike water-cooled spindles, there are no water lines, pumps, or reservoirs to leak or fail, and features an ER20 collet system for low runout and easy tool changes. While the available Easy Tram mount allows for shim-free tramming adjustments for the perfect cut. This complete cutting system is assembled and QA tested at our factory, including the plug-and-play VFD controller. We provide industrial quality cables, locking power plug, and heavy duty power entry to ensure years of trouble free production for both business and home shops. If you haven't already, we recommend labeling your motor and sensor cables, preferably as you route them during assembly. We're using color codes here corresponding to the axis orientation diagram in the motor and sensor connections page of the assembly manual. Labeling these cables now will reduce the likelihood of swapping them during connection. For color-coded cables, we like to use a double band to indicate the plus side of the axis, such as the X plus cable shown here. Let's review the machine's default orientation. The Z axis shown in green is the vertical up-down axis that raises and lowers the spindle. X, shown in blue, moves the cutter along the gantry left and right. Y, shown in red, along with the slaved axis, shown in yellow, moves the cutter along the two rail axes back and forward. Our plug and play controllers are designed to work with our proximity sensor kits as either homing only or homing plus travel limit configurations. Homing allows the machine to always return to the same physical coordinates, even if you lose power in the middle of a job. For dual drive machines, such as this Pro Series machine, homing also enables automatic squaring of the two rail axes. This auto squaring feature is pre-configured in all of our Pro Series machine configuration files and only requires the Y home and slave sensors be installed and enabled. This feature also means you only need to make small adjustments to the sensors to permanently calibrate squareness of the gantry. The home switches can double as travel limit switches, meaning we only need to add two more sensors to have a full home plus limit configuration.
We have included hanging hardware kits with both enclosures, allowing you to mount them in a number of ways depending on your setup. Note the orientation of the keyholes and make sure you install the brackets correctly for your mounting method. The mounting holes have plastic plugs that are easily knocked out. I'll insert a bolt through the back with a bracket and thread and tighten the nut inside the enclosure. And repeat for each bracket. For a typical Pro Series machine using our optional leg kit, we recommend mounting the enclosures on the include mounting bar just below the cable track. For this location, we only need to install three of the hanging brackets on each enclosure. Now we can start plugging things in, starting with the motors. I'll take the blue X-axis motor cable and install it in the motor port labeled X. The red Y-axis motor cable into Y. The yellow cable into Slaved. The green Z cable. We have an A motor port which we'll leave open for future use, such as a rotary axis. Now we can move on to the sensors, starting with the blue X home and X minus combined sensor, then the double blue X plus limit sensor, now the combined red Y home and Y minus limit sensor. and the double red Y plus limit sensor. The slaved axis doesn't need its own plus limit sensor. Instead it shares the Y plus sensor. We'll connect the slaved axis homing sensor. The combined Z-axis home and plus limit sensor. Next I'll connect the included e-stop switch. And twist clockwise to unlock. Since I have an AutoZ touch plate, I'll connect that to AUX1, which is pre-configured to be the Pro port. Since I have a plug-and-play spindle, I'll connect the 14-pin VFD cable here. Now I'll connect the AC devices I want the CNC computer to control, such as a dust collector or a router if we didn't have the spindle. Each outlet is individually powered and switched, so you may find it useful to plug in the line in to a separate circuit than your control enclosure. Next, I'll connect my Ethernet cable to my control box and the CNC control computer. And finally, I'll connect the controller to main power and turn it on. Verify that the motors are enabled. If you ever need to unplug a high current motor cable without turning off the controller, you should use this switch. Though keep in mind that when the motors are not energized, it is possible for them to be moved and lose position, particularly Z. Always rehome the machine after powering down the motors. On to the spindle electronics. First, I'll connect a power cable from the spindle motor to the VFD controller, being careful to ensure that the arrow on the plug and socket line up. Next, I'll connect a 14-pin cable from the CNC controller. And I'll connect a 220-volt locking power connection. And power up the VFD controller. The enclosures are now ready to be mounted. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, you should check out our Pro Series Mechanical Assembly video and our other initial setup and sample projects, available here and on our website. Visit cncrouterparts.com to learn more about our plug-and-play electronics and ready-to-assemble CNC machines.